saying is stand up. If we do not stand up for what we believe, who will? This is the Lord's will. And I want to welcome you today, my audience, to our interview. And we have a very special guest today. His name is Mr. Khan Holiday, and I'll tell you a little bit about him. I will tell you that he is a man that can be depended on but by those he works with. He's been found blessing to the Salt and Light Ministry, Grand Reef, Punching of Character, and whatever else God is needed for. He is a man of God who, who is always available. But just to tell you a little bit about him, Khan is a Christian. That's the first thing I want to tell you. And Christianity is his culture. He is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's lived in San Diego for over 25 years. He did undergraduate studies at Christian Heritage College. He is a concerned citizen, a father, a business owner, and a patriot. Okay? He's a patriot. He comes from a family that runs the full spectrum of society, from those in law enforcement to those on the wrong side of the law. Sound like all of our families. Volunteers with many local churches, the Salt and Light Council, he, uh, the content of character, as I said, events, and parachurch functions. All I can tell you, my dear friends, is be invited to a treat today with Mr. Khan Holiday and help me welcome him to this interview today. Good morning, Khan. How are you today? I am well, Dolores. Thank you. Thank you hey. so much for such a warm introduction. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> it's my privilege, my blessing to have you today. So anyway, we're going to dive right in. Uh, All right. You know, as we look at what's happening around our country, I kind of wanted to talk about what's going on in our country because mm. America is a blessed place. America is a good place. America is a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's getting a wrap today, and I'm tired of America getting getting a wrap. You and I both. We want to talk about that today, um, because you know what? Americans take too much for granted. We take too much for granted. And I don't take this country for granted, because God has given us this country. Mm -hmm. He gave it to us. And gave so it to the world. Appreciate it. If we don't appreciate it, we will lose it. Amen. Amen. We will lose it with what's happening in our streets today. And yes. The we will lose this great country. And I'll, I'm going to tell you this, Con. I don't want to live in Venezuela or Cuba or China. Okay? I don't want to live in those environments. And that's what's coming to America if America does not change course. So yes. We've got to change course. And those who are hating our president, mm -hmm. you can get over because he's the only person standing up for America. Mm -hmm. He is mm -hmm. the one standing between us and tyranny and Venezuela, Cuba, China type mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's a fact. Yes, I agree. If you can agree. disagree with me, fine, but that's the truth. Donald Trump is the one standing up for America. Mm -hmm. He stands up for this country. Now, let me ask you this question. <clears throat> when you look at America, do you see America as a racist place? Not at all. America is far from a racist place, despite, even despite of... Uh, how America had its founding in the, the beginning. Um, you look at where America has come from, you've never seen a country in history that has done what she's done. To have started the way that she did, but God has given her the wisdom to cr make corrections and to correct herself and to, uh, to, to chart a course that is going to enable people of any ethnicity, no matter where you come from, to become part of the American dream even despite how she started. So you look at her original scene, you look at where she's at today. What other country in history can you point to that can say the same, that can boast the same? America has been given by God, I believe, as a gift to the entire world, not to, just to us here in America. Because <clears throat> whenever you look at God's principles, when he gives something, it doesn't just bless those who he has given it to but it blesses those who their sphere of influence is around. You look at the sphere of influence of America, all the nations in the entire world are blessed in their interactions with America. God is given America to the rest of the world as well. And I think that America, you look at America, I don't see 
a racist country. I see something that may have had issues with in terms of the way she started, but she's on a course that corrected, that was corrected and has corrected itself. And you look at someone like Donald Trump and he is somebody right in those lines and needed for such a time as this, where as she is being uh, seen in such a negative way, uh, almost like an implosion is taking place from uh, the uh, liberal ideologies that, that are being espoused here in this country. You have someone like Donald Trump who is charting the course, all that America believes in all her ideologies and wants to give that to the rest of the world in a way where they can then be elevated as well. Amen, amen. And you know, Tom, what other country has fought a war to rid itself of slavery? That's right. No, I can't think of one. No, no one. Else I cannot think of one. A war to get mm -hmm. rid of slavery. And then we have to remember that slavery was everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know, people in America act like we were the only country that had slaves. Right. Guess what? The whole world had slaves. And right. there are some that still have slaves. Yes, unfortunately. Okay. And guess what? I don't want to live in slavery. Living right. in, in a pure Venezuela, China type government would be slavery for an American citizen. Yes. This is what our people have to realize. Right. That's what's at stake. That's what right. It, right. it nearly was at stake. So anyway, I get excited about it because I could I see it. I know what's happening in, in our country and I don't like it. Right. I don't like it and I want to speak up about it. Now, hey, Dolores, if, if I can speak on that point, I, there's a, a cousin of mine uh, growing up. He told me, he said, uh, there's a, he said, I have a, a little trick for you. You know, he said, and this is something that your life can benefit from. And I said, what is that? He said, y if you want, you can leapfrog through time. I said, leapfrog through time. I said, how is that possible? You know, and I, like, you know, I know he's trying to get me. And so he said, look, he said, if you look at the mistakes that I've made in my life, if you look at the mistakes other people have made in their lives. He said, you will never have to experience the negativity from what those mistakes have brought upon their life, but you can get all the benefits. America's in that same position right now. <clears throat> if we look at Venezuela, if we look at China, if we look at Cuba, we look at these other countries, we have wisdom enough to look and see where they are at from the mistakes that they have made. We can leapfrog through time and not have to go through those things ourselves. We can, we can chart a, a course that is going to steer us away from those things so we'll never have to experience the socialism, the communism, or the Marxist uh, ideologies that have ruined and destroyed entire nations throughout history. We never have to go through those things if we have wisdom enough to watch, see, and avoid it. You are so right, Khan. And, and but you know, look around at who's running our colleges, our universities. Mm -hmm. Look at Black Lives Matter, yeah, I said it. Mm -hmm. Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter, a Marxist mm -hmm. group, super mm -hmm. Marxist. These are not yes. my words, these are their words. We are mm -hmm. super trained Marxists. Wow. And their whole ideology is to bring down the United States of America. Yes. Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are to get, they have corporations, they are given million, corporations are giving them millions of dollars. People are bowing down to Black Lives Matter after the death of, of George Floyd. They took that man's death and now they are using it to bring down this country. Opportunists. Exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. And they You're have right. help from the Democrat Party. Yeah, I right. said the Democrat Party, people in politics in this country who right. don't love this country, right. want to see it fall down. And, and the black families have not. And, right. and you know, Con, another thing, this virus is being used to bring this country down. It's political what is yes. happening with the reporting numbers I was listening this morning. In the state of Florida, it's mm -hmm. oh, we had 173 deaths. But you know how what the actual number was? What? 14. They're using all numbers to report the number of cases of deaths of coronavirus. And it's right. not just in Florida, it's all over this country that right. the numbers are being seen. People right. are lying about the numbers because there's a political it's game of somebody mm -hmm. and they would use it to bludgeon President Donald Trump over the head with the oh, he didn't do a good job. Right. It's fault. No, it's not his fault. It came from China deliberately. Right. Yeah. You're right, it's political. It's, it's political. Good. Call it out for what it is. We have to call it out. And you know what? If we don't call it out now, our voices are going to be silent. So they I'm will. 
going to call it out for what it is. Yeah, we need people to stand in, in the gap like you're doing right now, Dolores. Yeah. I thank God for you. Yeah, well, you know what? All of us have to stand. If you yes. love America, you better start standing up for this country. We are one election mm -hmm. away from a Venezuela Cuba type government, and I'm yes. not joking. We yes. really are. Yes, you're right. We really are. When we look at the riding in the streets, when we look at police officers mm -hmm. in plummeted bricks in <clears throat> neighborhoods, frozen right. water bottles, police on the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge been beat over the head with bats. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's acceptable. Prisoners are let out of, they've been let out of prison. Right. Right. Prisoners right. are being let out of prison. Let and out of prison. Right. And people who are refusing to wear masks are being accosted. Exactly. <laughs> a couple yeah. who, <laughs> I, can't use a, I mean, look, the couple who defended their home, back in right. Chicago, they came, right. these people broke down the gate, came right. in their yard, threatened them, and because they came out with the gun to defend themselves, they are the yeah. ones. Who are being prosecuted. Yes. Yeah. How backwards, how backwards, oh, and yeah. where, how far have we come? Yeah, yeah, we, we are slipping, slipping yeah. in the wrong direction. I wish I wish I could say that, uh, you know, the things that you espouse to are just exaggerations, but unfortunately, this is really where we're at. And like you said, we're one election, one election away from uh, being in those type of countries uh, that you just alluded to, unfortunately. Yes. We have to stand. Oh, Now's the time. Yes, 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 we do. And you know, Con, when we look at our people, Black people mm -hmm. have been the most successful mm. any other here in America than any other place. Yes, yes. Our people have been successful. Barack Obama was elected president two times, a yes. black man. He yes. was elected president twice. Right, yeah. And we're still complaining, mm -hmm. still not satisfied. Right. And his wife owned three mansions. Now oh, they wow. have in Martha's Vineyard, 29 mm -hmm. acres, $14 million mansion, and and wow. we have racism? Right. I, 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 it's a, oh, it's a different, <laughs> Dolores, it's a different type of racism. It's one that we're not supposed to realize exists, right? Yeah. And, we're chasing ghosts. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, well, I, I guess you could say what's for you is not for me. You know, you can't have what I have. And that's just like I would say with um, uh, President Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when he came into office, he ended something for our little black children, our little Hispanic children. Mm -hmm. Opportunity scholarships were mm -hmm. given to the children in the DC schools and all over. President Obama ended those scholarships for our children. He did not want our children to go to the same schools as his daughters who were daughters of privilege. We talk about white privilege. Wow. These were young black girls of privilege. And I'm not complaining about it. Thank God. Right. That they had that privilege. But he denied that all wow. throughout his presidency. He cut that program and would not allow it to be implemented. I'll never forget a little black boy, sister, his mother, Mr. President, please don't cut my program. I just want to grow up to be a good man. He was a little wow. begging for that right. program to stay in place, but no. He didn't allow it. Cut that program for our, for our children. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so you know, those are just some of the things that, and it's so much, so many other things that people just don't know. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. so, and I and I think it was President Obama squandered so much. He could have done so much. Mm -hmm. Race. He was a race baiter instead of a healer. He could well, have been thank for this nation, but he wasn't. Right. You know, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I see I see it as being a, a bittersweet thing because now you have somebody on Donald Trump. It shouldn't be on his plate for him to have to deal with, but it, sh it, it goes a long way to show the type of man that Donald Trump is because yes. these things have been left on the plate for him. Yes. And what is he doing? He's dealing with them. Yes. He's, he's, he's not sweeping them underneath the rug. He's not just pointing the finger and saying, oh, you know, Barack should have dealt with this. He was a black president. Yes, he exactly. should have dealt with this. He's saying, no, I'm here. I'll take care of it. That's okay. He didn't want to. I care about you. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. I got you. And I think that whenever we take time to start thinking 
instead of just being emotional, we'll see Donald Trump for who he truly is. A lot of times people get wrapped up in his delivery. Yes. He's a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's a New Yorker. I'm an East Coast guy myself, right next door. He's a New Yorker. We tend to wear how we feel on our sleeve. So if you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, but at least I just, I put it out there. You can read it and take it however you want to. But you know, I, I told you exactly where I'm coming from. I intend to do exactly what I said I was going to do. By the way, Donald Trump made all these campaign promises. By the way, Donald Trump fulfilled all these campaign promises. Now, where do you get that from other politicians? You don't. You don't see it. No, we seldom see it. I think the last uh, great one was uh, Ronald Reagan, who fulfilled most of his campaign promises. I mean, it, it's just one of the things where you can, unfortunately, you come to expect a politician to be political during his campaigning and then turn around and give you something other than what he promised, because all he was doing was being political during his campaign. Donald Trump said what he meant, and he meant what he said. And you see those two things coming together with Donald Trump, his campaign promises and what he's done since his campaign promises. He's tried to fulfill every last single one of the promises that he's made to the people to keep yeah. it. He's a man of his word. So, you, you know, you, people might get wrapped up <clears throat> in not liking his delivery. When you stop thinking with your emotions and you start thinking with your mind and start paying attention to what is actually being done, you will see a different man emerge out of your own consciousness. And that's because you were the problem in how you saw somebody and how you judged somebody instead of allowing someone else to have their own personality to be who they are and express themselves the way that they express themselves. And you look at their actions and you see their actions are consistent with what they said they were going to do and had every good intention whenever they said it and they're fulfilling it. Now, you know, Donald Trump, there's some, uh, some showmanship in, in him as well, but that's, again, part of his personality. And you, you allow somebody to be who they are, but you see the man has very good intentions because you look at the policies he's looking to implement. Every last single one of them are doing things that are going to put this country light, hit, light years ahead once they're implemented. They're not going to hurt this country. They're only going to do good for this country and bring about good things, not just for the current generation, but the generations to come. People need to get on board with what Donald Trump is looking to implement. Yes, you're absolutely right, uh, Khan. And, and I'm going to say it, Donald Trump has done so much for Black yes. people. Mm -hmm. He, as a Black person, Amen. president, has done a lot for a black lot. people, a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, black colleges, they don't have to go begging every year for right. president. The prison reform. Right. So many things that he wants to do, but his hands are tied. Right, right. He wants right. to do even better things for this country, but his hands have been tied. Right, by right. By politicians who mm -hmm. hate him. Mm -hmm. They pre and, and some some pretend to be on board, but whenever you look yeah. at how they are uh, obstructing uh, some of the things that he's trying to implement, yeah, you're right. It comes down to them hating him, and you know, they just don't want yeah. to see certain things go through. Um, I don't mean to interrupt you, but if I can say you just made mention of um, prison reform, uh, Dolores, I, just something I, I have to say that's on my heart um, concerning Donald Trump and prison reform. At the moment that uh, prison reform was announced. I knew instinctively, I knew that that also meant police reform. I know uh, Donald Trump is an ardent supporter of the police department and law enforcement. He is also the law enforcement branch of our government. Yeah. So it goes to say, it only makes sense, right? So yeah. he's gonna support what he is at the same time. He, he ran uh, for a, an office that was a, the, uh, uh, the executive branch, which is the law enforcement branch of, of our government. Uh, quite naturally, he should support those who are, um, are going to be, have the power dispensed to them for them to enact and help to fulfill uh, what his policies are. But it also meant reforming of the police department because you can't have prison reform on the back end without dealing with some of the things that are happening on the front end. And I thank God that he was willing to do that. Now you didn't hear any public announcement on the uh, police reform, but you knew it was coming. 
if you know if you were a thinking person you knew that that was something that was just going to naturally um that was going to to take place and here we are unfortunately uh, you know we have uh george floyd's death that was uh more of a catalyst <clears throat> for it coming to front and center um uh, probably before its time <clears throat> excuse me before the time that it was otherwise going to be implemented but nonetheless it was coming it was coming and what precedent under which precedent was it it's donald trump again yeah. And whose lives are affected uh, uh, to a great extent? African American lives are are affected. Um, we see a lot of disparity in uh, you know the uh, justice um, uh, department as it relates to that. But he is again righting wrongs. He's righting wrongs that he never should have had to deal with because those things were there whenever Barack Obama was president. They were there whenever Clinton was president. When George Bush was president. But who is the one? who's actually taking it upon themselves to deal with it. Racist Donald Trump. Well, you know what? <clears throat> He's got racism all wrong. If this is what being a racist looks like, he needs to go back to school to learn how to be a better racist because he's failing miserably. He's failing miserably. And who's benefiting from it? You and I, we are. Yes. We really are. You That's know, right. and Donald Trump is no one's racist. Um, you know, it, it takes an ignorant person to really look at what he's been, uh, what he's been doing, all that he's being, uh, that he's looking to implement, and to call someone like that a racist. He's failing at racism. If that's what a racist is, he is absolutely failing at racism. I thank God for Donald Trump. Yes, you know what? Those who call him racist need to take a lesson from mm -hmm. him. They need to take a lesson because they hurl that word out on a daily basis. But right. let me ask you this. Now, I've been looking at, uh, there's something called the 1619 Project. I talked about Black Lives Matter. Are you familiar with the 1619 Project? No, I'm not. Okay. 1619 Project is another, along with Black, now, let me go back. Black Lives Matter, we know that they are a Marxist group. Yes. They are implementing their curriculum in our schools, which is very dangerous because the curriculum that they are implementing in our schools, and they are being allowed by school districts to implement a program, is going to cause further racial divide in this country. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what its intent is, to bring a racial divide. Now, the 16, uh, 1619 Project, I'll tell you a little bit about it. That program is going to offer more lies and deceit to our children in school. It was launched last summer to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the first arrival of African slaves to the American colonies. Mm. Nicole Hannah-Jones, a reporter of the New York Times, she's the one who brings this forward. Now, both conservative and liberal people of education, they have gone through her research and found no evidence to support her contention. They did find a lot of his, his, uh, historical inaccuracies and distortion. Now, mm -hmm. Winfrey even jumped on this bandwagon. She wants to start a series on the 1619 Racist Project. Now, she should be the last one talking about racism and pushing stuff that's a lie <laughs> on our society. Wow. But yes, yeah, 1619 will just bring further divide mm -hmm. along what you got that. Then you got the Black Lives Matter curriculum. You know what? I saw little children yesterday. Parents had their little children dressed up yesterday on TV, marching with signs, F Trump, F Trump. They had their little signs marching with their little, they're teaching their children, little children to hate the president to hate this country. That's why we are in a racial situation right now because people are teaching hate. Right, but we right. should we should be <clears throat> down on our knees thanking God for mm -hmm. this country, thanking God for America, for where he has brought us from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be doing, thanking him, not teaching our children to hate this country, to Amen. hate our president. Amen. Amen. You might not agree with it, but right. don't look at what you feel. God, right. I agree with you. What mm -hmm. has he done? Right. Take the Policy. time to go through. As a matter of fact, take the time to go through what the Democrat Party stands for and the Republican Party stands for. 
Go through there and look at those platforms. Right. Look at who right. talks about God. Look at who talks about the church. It's not the Democrat Party. Right. It's the Republican Party. Matter of fact, there was a Democrat who started the KKK, Jim right. Crow Paul. Right. Jim, and they didn't even want approve for, for black people to vote. Right. You know, racist, the Democrat Party has a history of racism. Right. And I in, in just want to tell every one of you, Go out and look at Larry Elder's movie. Mm, mm. Okay. I heard it was wonderfully done. I haven't I still have yet to see it, but I heard it was wonderfully that done. Movie, you know, you can rent it on demand and you can also buy, you can go on the online and buy that movie. Uncle Tom, Uncle mm -hmm. Tom, every American needs to watch that movie, Uncle Tom by Larry Elder. That movie mm -hmm. is excellent. Just sit down, take a deep breath. Right. Take it in, watch it, Good. Uncle Tom. Look at that movie. You know, we have some great uh, black uh, people in this country. Thomas Sowell, mm -hmm. you know, Walter Williams, you know, mm -hmm. Clarence, Justice Clarence Thomas. We have yes. some people that they don't even get talked about. They get no recognition. Mm -hmm. And they are some wonderful men. Yes, and, and, I agree. Uh, and also, then, uh, for 1776, that that program, uh, oh my goodness, that's another one that's trying to combat the 1619 project. And 1776. Yeah, 1776. That that uh, let's see, what's his name? Bob. <laughs> anyway. 1776 is another program. That one is designed to combat the 1619 project. Good. There's another organization um, uh, that is uh, started with, it started by a gentleman who you and I have worked with, with uh, to some extent, with content of character. Um, and that is uh, Kevin McGarry. It's called Every Black Life Matters. And it oh, is, okay. yeah, it, it just in, in terms of uh, uh, giving plugs for, organizations that are doing something good and uh, people who are doing something good and uh, trying to combat a lot of the nonsense uh, that is happening. My pastor wrote a book called The Third Option. And then The Third Option, um, it, it basically, what he lays out is that there is a way, whenever you're looking at uh, situations where there's tension, especially racial tension. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be, you have to be on one side and you have, or you have to be on the other. Like there are only two options that are available. <clears throat> there's also a third option. And that third option is that of honor. You okay. honor your God and you honor the fact that someone else is an image bearer of God and you honor that in them. And so you bring respect and honor to the table so that you can have a dialogue. Um, and what that looks like, before in a situation like where we're at here in America, it looks like black people uh, stepping up to the plate and saying, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of things that are happening here concerning uh, not just Donald Trump, but just this nation that has truly given so much. Yes. Truly given so much to us, to our, our, our families. And, and uh, despite of how she may have started, this country has given so much. And I would even dare say given so much more than anything that she's ever taken. But she has given so much and we need to be the ones who step up and to deliver that message to, as a unified voice to the general public. And what it looks like on the other side uh, if for our white brothers and sisters, them stepping up and them saying, you know what? Yes, every, not just Black Lives Matter as it relates to the police, but every Black life matters. Yes, yes. And I agree that there is, uh, you know, some work that, that still needs to be done, and we want to help in that effort. And so you have two different ethnicity groups and two different uh, uh, subcultures approaching the same issue from opposite ends of the spectrum. And that's a third option. Each one does approaches it from a position of honor. I want to honor this country, my white brothers and sisters, I want to speak the truth about what this nation has done for us, what she has given, despite of how it started, all of the good things that are here. Let me focus on that. And then on the opposite side, you know, our white brothers and sisters approaching saying, yes, look, you know, I understand that some things have been done wrong. I want you to know that.
that you're honored. And this is how we can uh, go on and bridge the gap to make sure that it is known uh, publicly that uh, we, we do have in our hearts this notion that every black life matters, not just the ones as it relates to police incidents. Yeah, why is it that black lives matter? When we say all lives matter, why does that make people enraged on the black lives matter side? Why do they get enraged when people say all lives matter? Because you know, God made every one of us. And you know, Con, what was another thing I wanted to say? Not one person on this earth can help what color they are, what race they are. We cannot help any of that. Nor so should we why? want to. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So God doesn't make any junk. He yeah, makes no he, junk. He made us just like we right. And I want to say to the white folks, stop bowing down to Black Lives Matter. Stop right. bowing need to these people. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Stop yes. bowing down to them because you give power to them. Mm -hmm. and the Whenever you do that. That give money to them, you are giving money against yourself and against your country when you donate to Black Lives Matter. But yeah. told us to bring down this country. I, I, I agree, Dolores, and, and I make a distinction uh, between Black Lives Matter as an organization and uh, as, as opposed to uh, uh, the, no, the notion uh, that Black Lives Matter. Um, the, the, the organization itself is nothing more than LGBT masquerading around as a Black organization. If you look at the charter, you look at the, the things that they believe in, they are anti-God, they are anti-family, and I'm talking about family that has uh, traditionally been shown uh, to uh, be a nurturing, um, God-given uh, uh, unit that is going to be uh, a contributor to society in a way that God has intended. <clears throat> so they are anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-family, they're anti-capitalism, uh, they are anti-American. They are so against Every, uh, every, everything that, that it truly is, means to be an American and it truly means to be God-fearing and God-honoring, there is nothing in that organization that we should want to have a part of <clears throat> because all they're looking to do, they believe that, that it's not necessary for the Black father to be in the, in the home. Exactly. So you, father absence is the biggest problem that African Americans, <clears throat> Black people face in this nation. If that's the biggest problem that we face and we can show statistics that are directly tied to that, why is it that we don't want the black father in the home? Why is it that we want to uh, continue with these social experiments of keeping a father out of the home and wanting uh, you know, two men or two women uh, to raise the, uh, the, the child? Whenever, it, every, by every truthful matrix that is shown, a father, and a mother coming together to raise a child is the healthiest thing for them. Well, that's natural. That's natural. It shouldn't take brain, you know, it shouldn't take rocket science for you to be able to figure that out. It's a natural thing. It's a natural progression. You have to go, uh, you have to go in a way that is uh, contrary to what is natural in order to come up with something else. God designed the family unit. He designed the family structure in the manner that he did for a reason. And we need to honor that. We need to honor that. This, be, uh, this Black Lives Matter organization is everything hurtful to the Black community. There is nothing good in that organization for the Black community. It will only uh, further hurt if they support Planned Parenthood who is a genocidal organization that wanted to do nothing more than to, than to be the answer for how to deal with blacks that were left in America after slavery. They wanted to kill us and sterilize us. And yet Black Lives Matter or as an organization supports Planned Parenthood. Why would I want an organization that is a wolf in sheep's clothing to be my representative to the world about me? And all they want to do is destroy me. All I have to do is to take time to look at what they truly believe in, Marxism, Planned Parenthood, LGBT agenda. And then I look and I say, okay, well, where am I and where am I at? And what things are necessary for my people culturally in order for us to move forward? I need a father, a black father in the home. Yes. I need God at the forefront in, in, in all the things that he has designed a family to be. 
I need not to uh, continue to yield myself to a lifestyle of promiscuity and, and, and killing my offspring. I need to do things that are going to be helpful to the society. I get none of that from Black Lives Matter or Planned Parenthood, none of it. They, it black people need to divorce themselves from those organizations as quickly as possible. Treat them like the flu. As a matter of fact, treat them like coronavirus. Yes, you, you, yes. And you notice where Planned Parenthood places their clinics. They're mm -hmm. right in the middle of our black neighborhoods, Hispanic neighborhoods. That's yes. where they place their clinics. Bob Woodson is the person in charge of 1776. Okay. He is, look him up. He is a phenomenal. I sure will. Uh, he comes on TV, he talks about, he is trying to put a curriculum to, he is putting together a curriculum to combat the agenda. And it, not only will the Black Lives Matter curriculum hurt black people, it will hurt every child mm. in this country. And that program, that education curriculum that they've been allowed to put in our schools need to be stopped right yes. now because mm -hmm. it's very dangerous. So their mm -hmm. ideology, you just described it, is mm -hmm. evil. Right. And they say out of their mouth, we want to destroy President Trump. We want to bring Trump down. They and are he's the best. See all this fighting in the streets. It's to bring down President Trump. Right. And when, when we see politics being used with coronavirus to keep the economy down in some of these states, yes, there are people dying. I don't dismiss that. People are dying. But we politicize that, too. A lot of lives could be saved by using hydrochloroquine, erythro erythromycin, and zinc. But yes. those things are blocked from right. people who could be healed. Right, because they want to funnel everything. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And it's unfortunate. You're right. It's political. And politics should have nothing to do with something that can help save the lives, not just Americans, but people around the world. Right. I yeah. agree. There's just no it's not necessary for that to happen i but, agree mm -hmm. anyway my goodness i'm just i am so thankful that you came on here today because i just needed to air this stuff out because mm. I, my, my spirit my soul would just when i hear all this stuff when i hear all this hate against our country it just bothered me to no end because i knew and i know that it's just lies being told mm. Yes. Lies. And, and, you know, when you talk about the black experiment, it was President Johnson who took fathers out of the black home, put right. mothers and children in projects. Right. And the father could not live in the home with the family. Mm -hmm. So the Democrat Party has been trying to destroy the black. The black family was very strong back in the day. I and agree. The Democrat, Democrat Party who went in and destroyed, they had a, like a black Wall Street. Right. And yes. it was destroyed by Democrats. Oh, yeah, so no, Oklahoma. Like, yeah, you're right. Prosperity that our black men had. They mm -hmm. were strong men who had yeah. this. Right. Who were and, successful. And right. We still have a lot of successful people in this country. And, you know, this is the thing, Tom, that I, I, the black people need to get look back where we came from and look where we are today. We can One. keep it is affected yes. by us doing and becoming whatever we want to do. No one is in the way except us. We prevent ourselves, but no one can what's, stop us. What's in here? That's and right. What's in between your two ears? And uh, here's a, a uh, an interesting statistics that I heard uh, recently: is one out of every forty Black Americans is a millionaire. <laughs> so, uh, as Vody as Vody Bacham. Uh, made, made Dr. Vody Bakum uh, made mention, uh, where else in what other nation around the world have black people been more successful? Nowhere. Nowhere. America has been a gift to African uh, people of African descent. She truly has been a gift. And, and, and you know, just like she's been a gift to the rest of the world. I mean, you know, we can, uh, we can actually boast that one out of every 40 um, you know, black people in this nation is a millionaire. I mean, that is, um, that's something you don't hear very often. Yeah. That's something you don't hear that very often at all. And, it, and it's a shame that we have this notion that America is nothing more than a cesspool 
of racism. Mm. She is far from that. Yes. Far from that. Anything but that. And the statistics show that. When you look at what America produces, it shows that. It tells a completely different story than what you're going to get on CNN, MSNBC, and all the rest of these other news uh, stations. Uh, the ones that are coming closest to telling the truth are Fox and um, uh, OAN, One American uh, uh, News Network. Um, you know, so you don't have a whole lot that is being put out there to tell the truth about who America really is and how she should really be viewed in light of what she's really producing. Instead, we have narratives that have been drummed up by people who are Marxist, people who are haters of America. And they're the ones that are speaking with megaphones and telling the story loudest. We need to stand up, as you're saying, and, and you know, you're, you're, what you're doing here today, I firmly believe in, in this because we need to see more people standing, especially more Black Americans uh, standing and speaking of the good of America and what she has brought to the table, what she does bring to the table, what she's looking to bring to the table, and being willing to tell the truth about Donald Trump. Here is a man, again, who is doing so much for people that don't look like him, and yet he's a racist. He's doing so much for people who want a better life, and he's, uh, you know, school choice. I mean, all the different things that he's looking to implement and put on the table. When has my me having a choice to choose something better for my child ever been a bad thing and yet the spin that is done to have it put in the minds of people that school choice is a bad thing you don't want that like okay i don't i don't want i don't want to be able to choose where my kids go i don't want to be able to choose something good for them you're right no you're not that's a bad thing me being able to choose where my child goes and be able to see okay i have this institution that has this record of doing well, I have this institution over here that has this record of doing little less uh, than this other one, and I have this one over here who does extremely poor, and I can choose which one? Okay, I want this one over here because they're the ones that are doing the best, and I want my child to have the best possible education. Why don't we do this for the politicians? Uh, especially those who are on the lawless liberal side of the aisle. Why don't you put your children in the schools that are performing very poorly? Give those others the choice to put their children in schools that are doing well. And then just see how things go for you. Allow people to have the choice to send their children where they want. Donald Trump is doing so much uh, for people, like I said, that don't look anything like him. He's looking at elevating the entire country up for those that want to, to be elevated, those who want to rise up with the tide. He's looking at helping those individuals. You can't make a rock float. If somebody chooses to stay on the bottom, you leave it. You leave it. And if it can provide some beauty at the bottom, then let it do its thing. Other than that, you got to keep on moving. Amen. I love it. I love it. You were so right. And you know, uh, Con, some of the demands of the teachers union down here in California, mm. one of the things that they want to do is to get rid of charter schools. That's one of the demands of Los Angeles District and I believe San Diego Unified. They want to get rid of charter schools. Now, why would you want to get rid of charter schools if you care about education? No, they want all schools to be. The same. Matter of fact, I was listening to an interview um, with a lady from Mexico, uh -huh. and she was being interviewed about the UN mm -hmm. taking over education for the whole world, a part of this one world government thing that we hear so much about. That's something that people really do want, a one world government, and we right. hear a lot about it. But here, the UN wants to take over education for the whole world, mm -hmm. put everyone under the same education, which is mind control right control exactly right by a few people mm -hmm. controlling the whole world right and people think that's not real but yeah it, it is a real thought and something that is is planned one world government yes and the, the, it's interesting that you should mention that um because what you have on a global scale on a worldwide scale the individuals who want to implement globalism tend to be the liberal um, uh, individuals from all of these nations that are yeah. coming together. Mm -hmm. There's something that follows with liberalism 
and that is control. Everywhere where I see control and control and control of people, always behind that is a liberal ideology. I never see a conservative ideology behind that, uh, controlling people. Conservative ideology says, you know what? I want people to be as free as they can possibly be. I want to limit the amount of uh, government interaction in my personal life. And conservative ideology is not going to want liberalism. Now you have people like uh, the Bushes and uh, you know some other people who were globalists. And so you'll have people point to them, they'll say, okay, well, they were conservatives and yet, uh, or at least they were with the conservative party, but yet they believed in globalism. But still what they were looking to implement were liberal policies, even within their conservative uh, uh, party. So they were looking at bringing liberalism into the conservative, uh, liberal, liberal ideology into the conservative platform. And that is an unfortunate thing because whenever you have uh, globalism, you are going to have nothing more than controlling of people, like you said, brainwashing them, looking to uh, centralize. And they're, they're, that, that was looked look to be implemented before. If you look in the Bible, there was a place where that was implemented. And that was uh, the Tower of Babel. God yeah. destroyed that for a reason. Yes. He destroyed that for a reason. Yes. There's uh, there's nothing good that comes out of that, you know, because man, we, you know, at, our, at our, our, our nature, unfortunately, is that of uh, sin and selfishness. And so whenever you bring everybody underneath uh, the ideology of a few, they're going to be used for those, the few's individual selfishness, and they're going to use the control. They're going to use that selfishness to control the other people for their own benefit, their own personal benefit. Yeah, you know, Khan, this is something that, and I'm going to get ready to close pretty soon, but you know, that's one thing that you spoke about all the millionaires, black millionaires, not just black, but people are wealthy in this country. Mm. And do they know what happened to the wealthy people in Cuba? Mm. We keep going in the direction that we are going. We well, allow Marxists, communists, and socialists to take over America, mm -hmm. all these rich people, guess what? Their the wealth goes to their wealth. They're going to be some of the first ones that these fat cats go after. Exactly right. That's what happened in Cuba. Exactly right. Venezuela. Exactly Cuba right. Chavez's daughter is the richest person in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. People are eating out of trash in Venezuela. They're eating their animals. They can't get toilet paper in Venezuela, mm -hmm. Americans. Right. That's what's happening. And that's what's right around the corner for, uh, for us here in this country. We don't change course. And if you think it can happen, <laughs> guess what? It can happen. And it's about to happen in this election if we don't elect Donald Trump. Yes, I said it. Yes. Donald Trump is standing up for not just America to be free, but for the whole world to be mm -hmm. free. Truly He's believe, yeah. I truly believe he's God's man in this time. Yeah. I truly believe he's God's man and he's a, a buffer. Uh, between uh, good and evil, good yeah. and evil. You look, you look at how God has used people um, in in the Bible, and there have been times whenever He's raised up someone in a very unique way at, and during a very unique time. Um, and it, 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 you look at individuals that He's raised up; He's given them a unique skill set that is needed for that specific time to accomplish a specific goal. And Donald Trump is is as tough as nails. Yes. Here, here you have a man. You think about it. Every single day, hated. Every yes. single day. I don't remember one day that he's been in office where they, they, the media has shown him any love. Not one day. Oh, no, no. I mean, so from from even before he was elected, it just said whenever he started running from the time that he announced, there's been nothing but this visceral contempt for him. But God... But God has uniquely designed him for uh, th this very purpose. You know what I mean? He's a New Yorker. And, you know, so, you know, like they say, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Yeah. Well, God, that's the fire in which God was refining the man because he knew he was going to turn around and send him to Washington, D.C., you know, as, as a president of, of this great nation, you know, and he was going to be needed to be that way because of the, uh, the opposition that he was going to be facing on the other side of the aisle. And no one else could have taken what he's taken. Yeah, God has refined him in a no unique way. No one else could have taken it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not perfect. Who is? Look None at of the us. Mirror, people. Are you perfect? Exactly. Exactly. Anytime. Look at yourself. <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror. I'm not I agree. Perfect. 
Okay, I am not perfect and neither are you. That's right. Casting stones against a man who's doing good. Right, right. Look at what he's implementing. Yes, yes. And when anytime I've ever uh, thought about, you know, Donald Trump, any infratty or uh, anything that may, he may or may not have done wrong, the only thing I needed to think about was looking, like you said, looking in the mirror. I was like, oh, you know what, Lord, you forgave me for being the knucklehead son that I am. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I can excuse that. I am, I'm not going to say I'm going to hold that against somebody else, you know, in that way. I'll leave that alone, you know what I mean? I'll let you be let you be the one who who deals with him on any issues that he might have, but you know, as in as much as I can do, I'm going to support who uh, God has put placed in office. Just like Barack Obama, whenever he was in office, uh, I I prayed for him and yeah. I wanted to I wanted to see him do well. Um, but whenever I saw the godless policies that he was implementing, I couldn't stand behind that. God never gives us the option of, of uh, standing for unrighteousness, you know, only righteousness, you know what I mean? And whenever it comes down to uh, choosing between two evils, he doesn't give you the right to choose either, you know. So uh, whenever it came to a lot of things that Barack was looking to implement, I just simply could not do. Um, but, you know, I look at what Trump is, is doing. I see godly policy being implemented. He wants to stop abortion. He wants to, uh, you know, uh, deal with uh, 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 policies that have shown themselves to be racist toward, uh, you know, um, uh, particular individuals in this country. There is a lot of good that the man is looking to do. And I, I get behind him and I support that. Yes. Hey, man. Well, I'm going to end with this one thing. And I, and I, I was reading that article, too, by uh, Dr. Baldy. Uh, mm. And this one little paragraph said that Black people in America are the freest and most prosperous black people in the world. Amen. Think Amen. about that. We are. And Amen. So we've got to count our blessings. We've got to yes, we realize do. God has blessed us. Right. God has blessed us. Don't look at the past. Yes, we don't forget the past. That's why we don't tear down our statues. That's right. We don't That's tear right. down what happened in the past. Guess mm -hmm. what? What is, what is it saying? If you forget where you came from, you will repeat those same things. Thanks. So when we right. turn on our statue, that's what we do. But anyway, got to cut it. Thank you, Cub. Oh thank my you. God, I thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much. And also to everyone who's listened to this interview, this podcast, thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel, hit that red button, mm. and share this message with your friends. And come back next week. Come back next week. We'll have another guest. And you can contact me at dwsviewstandup at gmail.com. And Con, I'm going to ask yes. you to pray, and then we're going to close. Absolutely, absolutely. Lord God, we come before you, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you do to God. We thank you for your love <clears throat> for people, for humanity to God. You love everyone in this entire world, Lord God, and you uh, love Americans, Lord. Uh, we thank you for this nation that you have given us, or those of us that call America home, Lord God. Lord, and the beacon of light and hope that you have intended for America to be for the rest of the world. Um, Lord, we thank you for that. We ask that you will touch every life that hears this program, Lord, uh, them and their families, Lord, bless them in a very unique and special way. Lord, we uh, just want to lift up our uh, nation. We want to lift up our leaders uh, before you. We want to lift up Donald Trump before you, dear God, and just ask it for your hedge of protection around our president, Lord, uh, so that he can go on and implement those things that are a part of your will that you want to see implemented here in this great nation. Lord, we ask uh, for the reputation of America to be seen for who she truly is, Lord God, not this racist um, cesspool of, an, uh, you know, of a place that, 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 that America truly is not, Lord, but instead uh, have, have her to be seen for who she, she truly is and all that she has sought to give to the rest of the world. Be being that hope and that light, that beacon of hope for everyone in the, throughout, this entire, uh, in the, throughout this entire nation, Lord. Lord, I lift up this, this program, Sister Dolores, um, and, and those who she works with, Lord God, Kim, I lift them all up, Lord, and I just ask that you would bless them, continue to give them a platform from which truth can be told. Thank you for all that you do and who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. God bless you. You too.